Hey guys, Skippy here, and I'm bringing you a quick, informative video, I suppose, about Napoleon Toast War. This I purely made off the spot, because what I like so much about Napoleon compared to other Total War titles is that it has so much balance in its unit types online. Far more balanced than most other Total War games, for example the completely unbalanced wreck of Shogun 2. Uh, don't make me go into that. Um, but there are a few things that let Napoleon down in the form of their maps, and so these are the top five most worst multiplayer maps for Napoleon Total War. Now, worst is a very general term. What I mean by worst in this situation is a biased map. A map that means that one side has a huge advantage over the other. Some maps are quite obviously uh, biased, others are not so much, and it's only when you play them that you realise how biased they really are. And so here is number five. So number five is Homestead. Homestead is a map originally from Empire Total War that was brought over to Napoleon, and looks a lot nicer than on Empire with these graphics. Um, now, you may be wondering why this is on this list. It looks, if you look at the minimap, like a perfectly even map. Perfect for large-scale 1v1s. That's right, it is perfect for large-scale 1v1s, but it becomes biased for a particular player against another player when you play with multiple people. What am I talking about? Well, if we look this side of the map, right here, where I've got my Dragoons, if you play like a 3v3 or something, one player is limited, usually the first player on the... Um, usually the host, sorry, uh, which is unfortunate, um, plays in this sort of deployment zone. The problem is it means that all this his opponent has to do is camp right here, right on this line here. Now, what makes this so difficult for the person who's over here who is being forced to attack because this person is camping um, and attacking is the most effective tactic on this game is that it is so hard to navigate your troops around these hills and forests and mountains that by the time you get out here you've got to reorganize the lines. Whilst you are reorganizing lines you're getting shot up by skirmishers and other lines it just tears them apart. Um, whilst you can get past this on 1v1s because of two reasons. One, you've got a larger map and two, there is the fact that uh, you don't have any opponents. On large-scale battles with multiple people, when you're limited to this area, if you go outside the area, you are either leaving your flank or you're going to get mowed down by your opponent's allies. It's a biased map. However, it is only number five because there are ways around it. It takes a lot of strategy, you will take a lot of casualties, but there are ways around this. And it's also for the fact that only one person out of every six uh, is in an unfortunate position. Number four on my list of most biased, I suppose you could say, uh, of, you know, the worst maps to play on Napoleon Total War is the map of Dresden. Now, I do rather enjoy this map because it is not as biased as some of the other maps on this list. Not, it's not even as biased as the last map. The only problem is, uh, the thing that puts it in spot number four instead of spot number five is the obvious fact that Team number one starts right next to the most significant strategic point in the game. The one thing that lets Napoleon down uh, balance-wise on online battles is the fact that they have not categorised river battles. River battles are, in essence, land battles with rivers on them, and as such, <laughs> there are certain maps where strategy is taken out. If you have a superior rifle or skirmisher nation, such as Great Britain, Prussia, or Austria, all you have to do is camp these rivers, have a few stakes, a few elite infantry, and a few rifles, and you have won the battle. Um, of course there are ways around this, I have fought this, played on this map many times, I have won many times, I've lost many times, 
I do thoroughly enjoy the map, but it is of course biased to the, the uh, I'd say, supposed defenders. Um, now, I've, I don't actually like putting it at number 4 because I do enjoy the map. Uh, whilst it is biased, it is actually quite easy to overcome the biased position. Just one simple charge should force the unwary defenders from this spot, seeing as they are so limited in space. In addition, if you have superior rifles, you can skirmish around there. Um, the town, well, you have more defensive buildings on this side of the town. Uh, this allows you to launch a proper organized assault across the river. So, um, for example, you can actually go in these buildings. I, You can go in one building on this side of the river, but it's all the way over there. Um, and finally over here, the person on this side has all of this space to deploy. Over here, you do have a lot of open space, but not so much, and you're being forced uh, by your teammates to do something. And most of the time, people on this side of the map, do, are, they are honourable, and they go out and have a proper land battle. And as such, I do respect the map and enjoy it, despite it being on number four of the worst maps on Napoleon Total War. Number three on my list of worst maps on Napoleon Total War is a map of probably one of the most famous battles in history. It is also infamous on this game for being one of the most biased maps on Napoleon Total War. It is, of course, Waterloo. Now, usually, whenever you see this map played, it's either a scenario battle, which is fair enough, uh, or it is someone who wants to win by camping on the historical hill of Mont Saint Jean, which is in real life where the British camped and defeated the French along with the Prussian and uh, Dutch forces. Um, the British start on this very large ridge. Well, they started there historically. It, you, of course, you, team number two, should I say, starts on this very large ridge, and as such has a huge advantage defending-wise. They also have the ability to grab the nearby farmhouses, so if they turn off the artillery rules, they uh, will also suffer... Well, the, sorry, the attackers will also suffer there, and they've got a nice little house at the back that they can go sit in. Um, so I'm hoping this is, you know, quite obviously, uh, quite obviously a biased map. If you can't see this, then go attempt to play a game on it because um, yeah I mean usually when I play on this map and I find myself on top of the hill I like to march down because I like to have fair open battles on this lovely plain here which is just perfect for a battle but other people do not feel the same unfortunately um, so yeah that's number three now the next map is considered to be along with the Battle of Canet tied with the Battle of Canet the most strategic battle in history. The map is Austerlitz. The Battle of Austerlitz in 1805 uh, is because it's, it's a very famous battle because it's just military genius by Napoleon. But I'm hoping you can see right here where Team 2 starts two very large hills. This one notably, it's called Pratson Heights historically. Put some artillery on there, and yeah, watch as the enemy crumbles. I understand that CA put this in for historical purposes, but perhaps make, you know, France... or oh, it was France historically. Perhaps make uh, team number two spawn down here or something, so that there's like a race for the hill, kind of like with the uh, other hilly maps in the game. But oh well, it is, a, you know... A, true shame <laughs> that uh, it's a biased map because besides that it's lovely scenery, lovely scenery and it is one of my uh, favourite historical battles um, so I would love to play it more but I never do because it's known to be such a biased map uh, and once again it happens to be Team 2 who are on here so just a warning for the future if you join a Napoleon Total War game on one of the maps we've currently listed um, if your opponent is on team 2 on that map and they're the host either join their team or leave because they are evidently going to use the map to their advantage so now we find ourselves at the number one spot before I reveal the one the number one spot I would like to quickly point out 
that um, I do understand that there is an element of strategy based on the map type and the terrain type. Um, and I do myself enjoy playing on all of those maps, including the number two and number three spots, despite their hills. And as I say, whenever I'm on the hill, I march down. And the other two maps, it, it, there are ways past uh, those positions. Um, this next one is the only map on Napoleon Total War that I will not play. I am actually shocked at Creative Assembly's map making skills on this. If someone hosts this game, goes on to Team 2, I don't know why it's Team 2 all the time, says no artillery, unlimited skirmishes, there's no skirmish rule, just no artillery, then you know that you're in for a shock because this is the number one worst map in Napoleon Total War and possibly all of the Total Wars. Welcome to Ligny. Um, you know, I, I just looking back at these maps, apart from Waterloo, of course, and Homestead, not Homestead, uh, might be Homestead, I can't remember what it's called, but apart from number five and Waterloo, um, all of those battles were battles in which Napoleon fought and won. I don't know if Creative Assembly are trying to tell us that Napoleon only won because he had a huge terrain advantage or not, but uh, there we go. Anyway, welcome to Ligny, another battle that Napoleon won against the Prussians. Um, at first sight, this lovely map, lovely green map, it looks perfectly fine for playing on. What makes it so terrible? Well, Look at Team 2's spawn right here in the middle of the map. Team 2's spawn right in the middle of the map. They have access to almost all of the major bridges to the rivers uh, on the map. They have access to most of the buildings right outside their spawn. They have the widest deployment zone. Then let's go on the other side of the map. The host or the person who's first in Team 1. They have an okay position. They have a hill, that's good. They have uh, space to kind of deploy. As you can see, it's a bit limited. But um, besides that, they've got a little, little house here. They could try and rush to the bridges, although they will be beaten, I'll tell you that. Um, the only problem is they now find themselves surrounded. Their last line of defense falls with their ally. This is the worst map making I've ever seen. Do not make a deployment zone this small, surrounded by rivers and just full of buildings. Honestly, you're, you cannot form a, a proper line inside this deployment zone. And coincidentally, it is where the two bridges to the battlefield are. You cannot form a proper attacking or defensive line at these rivers. And you're going to be forced to either attack or defend by your enemy who spawn on either, either side of these bridges. Um, you are forced to either die or pull back right here to the edge of the map and form one line. In which case, you're, you are leaving your ally to get screwed over and wait until the end. There is, of course, a third option. But this is just a strategically retarded option. It is crossing this bridge here, the escape plan, and getting yourself surrounded on the hill with your ally. Which strategically is a no-no. Um, welcome to Ligny. Welcome to the most biased, the worst map, in my opinion, that I have ever played on a Total War game, let alone Napoleon Total War. The others I don't mind playing, despite their biases. This one, I cannot play. One, because, you know, I won't play even if I'm on this this team. Because I know that I'm not winning through strategic skill. I'm winning because I start in a better position. It's just like Shogun 2 all over again. Shogun 2, you won the battle when you selected your units. On this, you won the battle when you select which place you deploy. 
And there are people out there who will go on, choose this map, host this map, and then immediately swap to Team 2 and invite random people in, and they just crush them. Not through strategy, you know, they're mainly like one or two star players who have got like 0.6 hours on the game. They don't win through strategy. They win because they can't lose strategically. Um, not strategically, sorry, they don't have strategy. Um, Terrain-wise, they can't lose. Deployment zones are... You're not going to get better than that. This is a terrible map. A terrible map, in my opinion. And this is the only map that I refuse to play on this game. Um, I mean, yeah, you could try and do something out of this. You could try and, you know, strategically outsmart your two opponents. But it, the thing that really gets me is this deployment right here. What are you going to do? You can't form a line in deployment. So the entire deployment zone, you're just sitting there watching the timer tick. You know, you can't even get two cavalry units to line up near one of the bridges to quickly seize them. Yeah, sure, you've got this bridge. But then if you defend this bridge, uh, you can't form a line. You're going to have like, you're going to have some units over here, some units in here, some units over there. You can't form a proper defensive line. You could attack. This is a very limited choke point, and you, you're just going to be a big clump. The eight, considering your enemy uh, spawns in these two boxes, they'll get you. You won't be able to get there in time. You could try and go across here. Yeah, you've got a, you've got a bit more space here. It's outside the deployment zone though. Um, and the moment you cross that river, you're screwed. Because the if you're playing against someone who understands basic common sense, then they are gonna get a get a line of infantry circling this area, rifles there, and you're gonna have a pretty tough time attacking. If you do defend and you're doing it successfully, then that opponent will just get wiped out in their terrible position, and the 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 ally will come and defeat you. It, of course, I'm not saying you can't win on this battle. I don't play it, so I wouldn't know. I've played it once, and I, I didn't even get to the end of the battle because Steam lost connection. Uh, and from then on, I realized how biased this map was. I, w I had not even engaged my enemy, uh, and it had been 20 minutes. This is the worst map, in my opinion, on Napoleon Turtle War. Okay. So before I finish, I'd like to say this is one purely my opinion, uh, based on battles that I've played, many hours on the game, um, you know, it, in my opinion, based on statistics, um, I feel as though those are the worst five maps. Do you feel differently? If so, feel free to comment. I am very interested to hear your opinion. It's always appreciated. Um... If you would like, I'll do the top five best maps, because there are some very good ones. Um, once again, based on bias level, because well, you see, the thing I like about Napoleon uh, is it's all about the strategy. Units, units, they are, they have a, a huge economic side to them, which is less so in other Total War games, particularly Shogun. Which means that you, you you usually have equal armies facing each other, unless you're against a moron who goes all, all unicorns, all ca camel rides. If you have a proper opponent who's playing with a proper army, you usually have a balanced army no matter what nation you're playing as. Unless you, you're against lifeguards. Watch my other video for that. Um, and I didn't think there was anything wrong with Napoleon until I played Ligny. Um, well, I suppose no game's going to be perfect, but... Uh, this is still my favourite Total War game for the online reasons. Oh, Lionheart's playing Total War Um But yeah, comment if you'd like me to make a top 5 best because I, there are some brilliant ones on this game. Um, comment, tell me your least favourite maps on Napoleon Total War and possibly some reasons why if you can. Um, I remember, this is just an opinion of mine. 
So don't don't take it too harshly if I said your favourite map was bad or anything. And if if you think I'm moaning, uh, no, I've just won a ton of battles on Arcol and Grassy Flatlands, so it's got nothing to do with that. Um, I just felt like making a video because you know I'm coming back now. I don't want to do more Napoleon content because that's my favourite game, which is why I've been doing a few Napoleon uh, online battles. So don't don't take it too harshly. Try not to hate. <laughs> If you do, then haters gonna hate, jokers gonna joke. Um, but yeah, feel free to comment your favourite maps, your least favourite maps, and whether I should do a top five. Um, feel free to subscribe. Feel free to rate the video, and I hope to see you guys next time. Wow, I'm really killing my uh, stats here. <laughs>